Hey VC, how you guys doing? Um, <clears throat> got a final finds video for you. So I'm um, excited. I've been listening to some of this stuff, so I can have a better idea of sort of explaining it to you. Um, just so you know, what you guys are listening to right now. If you hope you can hear us in the background. Really, really cool stuff done by, done by this one guy. Um, I found it on Bandcamp. I've been looking through Bandcamp, getting into this store, finding some more independent releases again recently. Um, I'll put a link to it down below. The artist's name is Circle of Sharks. Now that's the name of the artist. It's actually one guy who goes by this term, this name called Circle of Sharks. And this is a brand new release called Lying in Wait. And it's just basically um, different tracks that he's done. It's his first attempt at doing vocals on some of the tracks and uh, there's five other releases but this is like the newest one so I started here. Really like the sound of it, very relaxing, very chill, um, very good for doing your own thing when you're laying down at night, relaxing, hanging out. So let's get to the records. Um, the first few I'm going to show you are the ones that seem like, you know, the ones that aren't as much the keepers, um, but I want to show you what I got. So let's start off with this one. Um, I got these first bunches you're going to get to are going to be from the ones from the Goodwills, uh, a Goodwill of Find I had. This is um, a live album from that band Little Feet. This is Little Feet Waiting for Columbus. Um, so on Warner Brothers, the double LP, Gayfold talks with um, one of the guys talking about where the tracks and the recordings came from. Um, I think there probably are fans of Little Feet in the VC. Um, just like I'm going to say with another artist, I don't think it's bad music at all. It's just not my... It just doesn't... It doesn't excite me in the same way. Like, you can tell they're talented. You can, put on, you can tell they put on a good live show, but... I really like the artwork, too. <laughs> but, it's just not my cup of tea. Um, I don't know. It just sounds like bands you've heard before, you know? Um, and I found these two records from Diana Ross. This is, they're both on Motown. Um, this is her earlier one, it's like her, an earlier one, it's like her fourth, I think it is. It's called Di it's Diana Ross, called Baby It's Me. Love the artwork on it. Love that lamp. Get a little booty shot. And um, this record came out in 77. Now, as well as that, we got this one, I'm pre this is the one that sort of blew it up for her. Um, this came out in 1980. This is just called, um, just called Diana. And it has that famous song of hers, um, I'm Coming Out. Now the gatefold's really cool. And there's a little signature in here, friend to friend, Diana Ross, 1980. But I'm gonna be honest, yet I listen to them. It's just Diana Ross, she just she just she just doesn't do it for me, you know. Like I wasn't sure what the feel of her, and I know she gets respected, but it just doesn't sound like the type of music that I'm gonna want to listen to, you know. It just sounds has a bit of uh, just not that interesting to me. Now these guys are interesting. Um, this is a band called Ten Wheel Drive. You guys might have heard before. It's their second album called Brief Replies, and there's a, guy, a girl who's famous in there. I'm not sure if her name is pronounced Jenna Raven or Jenna Raven with a Y, but this is their album called Brief Replies. It's their second album. They were around for like six years, from like 68 to 74. You shot inside there. Bunch of these guys, and then you have the one woman. Now this woman was in a, um, a previous all-female band. Let's remember, it's something in the Gingerbreads. Um, and what happened with that? They eventually broke up. They were like the first real female rock and roll group to ever like enter the Billboard charts. Um, so when she broke, they broke up. She wanted to sort of start a new thing, and um, it's on Polydor. Their second one, I think it was on like in the 1970 or something. It's nice and clean. It, but like I said, it's just 
Now there's some good stuff on here. I'm not gonna lie. Um, there's tracks on here that I enjoyed. Um, ones that I like here. Come live with me on the first side is a very good one. Um, I think I enjoy the first side more. What's the song called? Pulse. Come live with me. Brief replies. Brief replies. The actual title track starts out with a much like softer opening. And then it's sort of all of a sudden, like it has like nice singing from her, and all of a sudden it just sort of goes into a little rock tune and ends up finishing that way. And um, I guess back then a lot of people actually compared her with Janis Joplin. Um, I read up some pretty cool stories. You know, that one of their first big breakout shows was in 1969 at the Fillmore East, I think. I don't think it was West, I think it was East. Um, and besides them supposedly having really good music, they're like an American jazz fusion band, but they're not, when you say, that's the thing, they're considered jazz fusion, but when I hear the term jazz fusion, I think of a lot of different things than what this band sounds like. This just sounds to me like they're, they're very, very bass and um, more of just a rock outfit, and a lot of people, I read the reviews, and basically it made sense to me that they're, they're, they're they have like a big band type of sound at the point that they actually talk about these guys in the same regard as like Chicago and Blood, Sweat and Tears, you know what I mean? So it's sort of just like, didn't really do enough for me, but at that concert they were playing in 69, it's crazy, supposedly it's really like famous because she like went all out, the main woman, Jenya, and she was uh, taking her, um, she like ripped half her, she ripped her like vest off and she was wearing like just paint on her chest and was like bare with just her boobs hanging out with just paint and whatnot. Yeah, anyway, it, it, it's just, there's some good tracks on here, but I just don't feel like it's going to be something I'm going to listen to, and the reason why I'm considering just, like, what I'm thinking is that these albums I'm showing you right now here are probably, like, I have a feeling that maybe these four are just albums that I can trade in and get credit for at a store, so they're not, I mean, I feel like they're not, if they weren't traded in, if they're not tradable, then I might have just kept, kept them, but because they are, I don't think I really need them. Now... I don't really know. This won't be able to be traded into anyone, but I thought it'd be fun to have. It's just funny. I figured this is like this. Basically, it says this music in this album is typical of the authentic German brass band music played by the Fretstand Alt Kammerdan band. And this is like in um, this is Fretstand is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, just north of it. So I just thought to myself, you know what? It'd be pretty funny because like. The whole idea of searching for music and finding new things, right, is about to be able to, the opportunity to be like, just knowing more and more about the things I can talk to you about, right? So I just thought, hey, it's pretty serious. I mean, at least I can go on with my life saying, oh yeah, I've heard German brass band music. German brass band music is badass. Not necessarily badass, but hey, right? At least I have it. <laughs> so this is the Alt Carmendon Band. I'm not saying that right at all, of course, but... It is what it is. That's my email sound, by the way. But I'm sure it's not that special. So, I'm not going to really talk about this much. I mean, it's just brass music, but I thought it would be interesting. There's waltzes on here and different types of music. Polka, a lot of it's polka, and there's a couple waltzes. It says right here, though, that the band has played at an Oktoberfest in Charlotte. Um, you might have seen them at the Holiday Folk Fair in Milwaukee, United German Society's annual Oktoberfest in Germany, become a tradition. Okay, now these are the things that I want to talk about more in the higher light. That one's sort of like, eh, but let's get started. I have Phoebe Snow's first album. I'm going to be very honest with you, a lot of people online, when I read reviews on Amazon and whatnot, talk a lot of good talk about Phoebe Snow as if she's one of the most underrated singers. And I had that first album of hers, and I think she's self-titled, great, if you look back at my early videos, great cover, really, really intriguing. And it wasn't necessarily bad, but I think I had a higher expectation, and I just remember feeling like, eh, you know? And so it was whatever, but I, this is only 50 cents, so I figured, you know what, like, I know she's worth giving a shot, because people respect her and like her. Um, this is on a label called Mirage, which I never heard of before, okay? And it's one of her later albums, it's Phoebe Snow, Rockaway. It's a cool cover for sure. Hope she's I'm glad she didn't fall off that cliff. And um suppose it's like more of like her rocking type of album, as opposed to like the earlier stuff that she's like more known for. And here I'm gonna be honest with you, I listened to it and sort of did my own thing. I was just looking over some stuff on the computer, listening to it going on in the background, and I actually found it pretty enjoyable. 
Um, so I, I, I'm sort of intrigued by Phoebe Snow. First of all, I think it's a really cool name. <laughs> but I also read some really interesting stuff about her and how um, he says with this down here that all this is for Valerie Rose and for children everywhere who need to be believed in. And then I found that reading about her that she had a daughter after a couple albums, and I think I could be wrong. It's just not, this is I don't remember the exact details. I'm just giving you a genuine idea of the story. Is that she had a daughter named Valerie Rose, who this album is for, and her daughter had a lot of serious illnesses and disorders and something like that. I'm not sure what the details were. So she took a lot of time off from her music, and when she was taking care of her daughter full time, so she was living at home just taking care of her daughter. Um, her daughter died in like her 30s, so she didn't live very long. Um, and Phoebe Snow passed away, I think it was only a couple of years ago. I could be wrong, but I know she, that she did pass away. This is from 81. But I'm going to go back and revisit that first Phoebe Snow and maybe listen to this. And I just feel like maybe I'm just not catching it yet, but I will get onto it and realize what it's all about sooner or later. So I always find it intriguing that I didn't get the Phoebe Snow the way other ways people do. Um, this is Bruce Hornsby and the Range, their first album, The Way It Is. This one's for you, Stephanie. I remember an earlier video of yours from way back then, way back when, um, when I first started joining the VC, and you did that video and you showed that CD for someone from the second album, um, The Sounds of the South Side, I think it's called. And um, so I didn't really ever get a chance. I meant to ever listen to that because you recommended it, but I didn't get to it. Um, and this is their first one, and I was really impressed. You know, like, this is, it has a good sound. Um, I'm not sure like how often I go back to it all the time necessarily, but knowing who Bruce Hornsby is, it's interesting to me. Um, it's so funny. This is the album title. I know Tupac's song changes where the sample's from, and I never even put two and two together until I literally put the song on, on the second side. I went to the first side, I liked it, thought this was pretty good stuff. Went to the second side, started playing, and I was like, oh my god. And I'm like, and I, so I did know that song from obviously, and I just never knew that it was Bruce Hornsby. So... There you go. And I, I, I enjoy it. Um, I've been listening to these for the last week or so, so I feel like when I listened to it at the time, I had more intriguing things and, and thoughts about it, but I'm sort of running low on the juice on them, so I'm sorry, guys. But, you know, I do remember enjoying this stuff. So um, this is Bruce Horns being the range, first album. Worth checking out if you don't know who they are. And I didn't know until much later that in the last, like, Five, six, seven, eight, seven, eight years of Grateful Dead's life, I mean, their band's life, um, before Jerry passed away, which I know people, I know it's not highly regarded for the dead wise, but I'm sure Jimmy know about this. I didn't realize, obviously, that Hornsby did some recordings with them and that he was a player in the band. Later period. Um, now this is interesting. This is out of nowhere, really. I have a, let me show you this. This is not the find, this is the prior to the find. I have a couple soundtracks that if they look interesting enough and they're not, how about this, I got this movie, I got this soundtrack to that movie from the 70s called Love Story. I still haven't seen it, but I have it downloaded on my computer. It's just like a sappy tearjerker film. Now, I never got to watch it and it seems kind of cheesy to me, but here's the deal. It says composed by Francis Lai, so I sort of like it if I can find soundtracks that are more composed parts for a film rather than like, you know, the big chill one that had all the, the, you know, not kind of want compilations. If I'm going to get into some soundtracks from back in the day, I want to have original compositions. So I thought this was cool and it looked pretty interesting and cute, so I picked it up. It's on Paramount. And um, now the actual, the stuff and the music, the themes and the music is really, it's really nice piano music. Now here's this. This is just this. It's just, there's no gatefold. Alright? It's just the one album on Paramount. And then I found this. Love story, dialogue, and music from the original soundtrack of the Mosin picture. Love means never having to say you're sorry. It's a pretty cool line, actually. And it's like a nicer edition of it. It has, you know, a really nice board around here, and it's like a special texture. And it opens up, and you have pictures from the film. And it doesn't actually have track listings. It just says on all of them. Um, just says dialogue and music. So what's interesting, I listened to the first side of this out of the four sides, is that it's almost like not having to see the movie. This is the special edition of the soundtrack and it basically does the music and then it goes into actual clips from the movie on the vinyl record. So it's like basically hearing this movie from start to finish in order of how things happen in the plot 
without having to see the movie, and it's just, it, it, it just, it does the whole story for you on this on the vinyl, with the music intertwined. So that was really cool. So why keep this one when I can have the music and the dialogue I want, right? So I thought that was cool. It's almost like an update of a soundtrack. All right. Now this was this was pretty cool. Um, a customer at, a, at the store at Starbucks who um, helped me with writing, giving me the personal the personal reference that he offered to do out of nowhere, which is sweet of him. Um, he told me that I should check out Emmy Lou Harris. So I had her in my mind, and I never got into her. And then I found this. It's a compilation profile, best of Emmy Lou Harris. It's on Columbia. No, Warner Brothers. I'm sorry. It just has a sticker back here. It says manufactured by Columbia House under license. Columbia House. Um, and this is like a compilation of her of hits of um, her work from the first four albums. So I've heard he was telling me about how a lot of Emmy Lou Harris. Some of you guys might want to give me some info on Emmy Lou Harris that she's really changed and sort of updated her her music and she still does her albums now and and she's very she's she's had a lot of growth and. Um, so I find it interesting, you know, but I, I'll be honest, I listened to this going to sleep one night, and I was just, I really enjoyed it. And anything that can get me into more country is good. I always want to appreciate every genre. It's sort of like if I can find jazz I like, it's good. And you're going to see some jazz, too. This is pretty serious, huh? You boy, it's just Johnny Guitar Watson. A real mother for you. Honestly, I shouldn't have to say anything about it. It's pretty self-explanatory, don't you think? Um, but I didn't really know about this guy, and the guy has a nice career, Johnny Guitar Watson, people compare him with Jimmy and stuff. But I mean, man, what a cover, right? If only I had this for Memphis and Final Jim and the Misses' um, car contest back then. Like, that should just be an automatic win. Look at that car. It's ridiculous. Look at your boy. This is on a label that I never really had anything of, I don't think. DJM. It's just funk music, you know? I bet you fat buck, fat back funk would know about this one well. It's just cool stuff. But I like it, so. I think it's a rare one to find in a Goodwill anytime. Okay, so those are my Goodwill ones. Now these are the ones I got from the record store recently and I really enjoy these. Actually let's start with this one. This is interesting. This is Herbie Hancock's Feature Shock. I actually called, me and Gil were talking on the phone one day, and it was funny when I got this pile like the day before, or just that day, and um, it's funny because we both got, he got Headhunters, I got Future Shock. Headhunters is definitely going to be more of my alley, I know it, but I thought it was funny because, you know, it's just one of those other things where the VC crosses paths spiritually. Um, this is on Columbia. This is the first of like his electro-funk movement with those three records he did. Now, I'll be honest with you, um, when I heard the beginning of it, well, this is pretty cool, you know, I never realized it was that song Rocket. I think I might have heard Rock before, but Rocket, you know, has more of like a hip hop flavor, and I didn't know Herbie Hancock had a period where he was going for that. I have Herbie Hancock's Thrust, and it's just much more up my alley. So like, this sounds cool, but I just don't really think it would really like be the Herbie Hancock that I love to have. Then again, Daryl gave me some really much later, like more recent, in the last decade, I think Hancock, and that stuff's real cool on the mix he made me, that Daryl gave to me. But, you know, when it comes to Future Shock, it's all right. It's cool for hip-hop reasons. But, you know, I'm much more of a thrust person, so I want to get more of the stuff from that period. This is a cool find. I was actually kind of impressed with this more than I expected to be. This is a guy named Rick Roberts, and it's an album called Windmills. I was intrigued because of the title Windmills. I think that's just something that intrigued me. And then the song titles. There are songs... Um, Deliver Me, Sail Away That's Seven Minutes, um, Two Lovely Women, Drunk and Dirty. Um, so I, I thought this thing might be cool. Now, it's, this is actually the guy from that band Firefall, which I actually had one of their records once, and then I kept, didn't keep it, and I traded it in or gave it away because it just sounded corny as hell. But, like, this guy actually sounds pretty good. And you can tell what's going to be from seeing it. You know what I mean? If like you see this, and it's on A&M Records, so I mean, we all know what an A&M Records that has this type of cover is going to be. It's going to be a singer-songwriter guy from the 70s, and you know, it is. But there's some really cool stuff on here. The first song, Deliver Me, it's very catchy, it's a good written song. And these are all songs by him, right? One song called Pick Me Up On Your Way Down is not by him. So we got four, 
We got five. Nine out of ten songs are written by him, so that's good. Now, his role, I'm pretty sure, is that he is obviously the vocalist, and he's the acoustic guitar guy on the album. Now, there's a real song here. The one song you'd want to hear from this guy is called Sail Away. It's a closer on the first side. It's over seven minutes long, and it's just a very, very relaxing, enjoyable song. So I'd recommend checking that out. Um, also interesting is that there's a bunch of famous or more famous people you guys probably know on a certain track on all these credits down here. Like on the song called Drunk and Dirty, we got Jackson Brown doing harmony, Al Perkins doing the pedal steel guitar and electric guitar, Joe Lala who's doing percussion, I don't know him, but they're all having like, you know, courtesy of, courtesy of records, Chris Hillman on bass, Dallas Taylor on drums. Now we got David Crosby does harmony on a song called In a Dream. So I mean you got people that are known people on here. Now we're getting to the good stuff. These are the four that I like the most, okay? Special pay attention to these four. Check this out. I bet this is really up. This is gonna be up your boy hat. This is gonna be up Henry's alley. Professor Harold Boggs, Heaven in My Soul. I was looking at the gospel section for a couple of minutes at the very last of this, like, when I was at Manifest, and I was just like, man, I was, like, intrigued, and I was just like, you know, I'm not for the first time, thank God, Henry, finally got one of these, I guess, if there's a shrink wrap on it, it's good, because then the sticker doesn't stay to the actual casing of the sleeve, thank you, boy, but that's the most psychedelic gospel sleeve you've ever seen, right, uh, it's on a, a record label called Nashboro Records, it's a cool, like, pretty purplish, pinkish label. And, um, uh, man, it's just serious, you know? It's just some real serious called Heaven in My Soul. It's just some serious, um, straight gospel singing. It's what you would expect. It's the old, let me get an amen. Let me get a hallelujah. Praise the Lord, I love Jesus. And it's that type of gospel music. It's fun stuff. This is cool stuff to have. I, I'm excited. I want to get more gospel. It's good. Alright. Next we got our boy. Peter Gabriel. This is Gil's favorite of his albums, actually. This is the self-title that's referenced as Melt. And man, the only album Peter Gabriel I've listened to so far that I've really enjoyed, but I've been very interested in him is so, which is obviously his big commercial breakthrough, but I can see where he got to from even from here to so, I can see the bits of so in here, um, Gil talked a lot about it with me on the phone about the rhythms and how he always has these rhythms going on, and man, I'm a big fan of this record guys, um, I really enjoy it, just, I mean, honestly, I remember hearing it, I think there was one on the other second side that was more poppy that I wasn't sure about second, but thinking back it was great. But for the most part, it was like there wasn't a single song when I heard on the first listen that I wasn't down with. So, I'm sure I don't have to say much because everyone seems to be big fans of VC and the VC of Genesis and Genesis members. So, but I'm really happy to own this. Henry, you got me involved and interested in this one, so I picked this up at Manifest. Ronald Shannon Jackson and the Decoding Society, Man Dance. No um, sticker, no Trans World sticker. Henry showed us one of his videos, and I was really intrigued by the guy. He's a percussion, he's the drummer. Um, and man, this is a, this is an awesome jazz album. And he was talking about how this is the type of stuff he likes. It's really just sort of out there and very improv and free. And this is this is a really cool record. So. Thanks a lot for showing me this, man. There's a couple other ones I think that, that are also that they had recently brought in from the used guy who brought some used records in. They were also from Ronald Shannon Jackson. Um, wasn't sure what the titles are right now, but this is a nice piece of art. This is a nice piece of work to have. So thanks for showing me that, Henry. And last but not least, this is the one I'm most excited about. This is so crazy. This is a gospel singer named Marion Williams, who I didn't know about, but is very famous actually. And it's an album called Blessed Assurance. And the reason why this is so freaking dope, listen. This album is a documentary about the magic that happens on the corner of 7th and Jefferson in North Philadelphia. The B.M. Oakley Memorial Temple 
is located there, and it's where Mary and Williams worships. We recorded her there because that's where she should be recorded. The whole album is music. The talk is music. The applause is music. Mary and Williams is music from Joel Dom. And right here, this album is dedicated to the memory of the late Bishop B.M. Oakley of the B.M. Oakley Memorial Temple. So this is a live album. You got in the church. You got introduction, and opening remarks, dialogue, dialogue, intermission remarks. They even close it out with a closing remains and benediction from the actual pastor. That's the newer pastor there. Um, man, this is just so dope. This is just some serious, serious live gospel music going on in the church. It sort of reminded me of the way I felt, to, you know, just a live experience. I don't know, it just seems different. You know how, like, you got the live concerts, like the Little Feet concert, or you have your live Bruce Springsteen albums, like the ones that Trish was showing for the box set? It's interesting, because you have these live albums, and yeah, it's live shows, right? But then there's special live albums, like that Michelle Shocked album I have, the Campfire, the Texas Campfire Tapes one. It's live, but it's like on a Sony Walkman recorded in the woods, and all you hear are the crickets and the trucks passing by on the highway with two people recording her songs. Like, that's a serious example of a live recording. Now, this is another one. This is some real serious gospel music that's done. This woman can sing her heart out. No wonder she's considered one of the best gospel singers known around. And... She has a lot of albums. I was actually able to find two more albums of hers, and I downloaded them off a blog, and they're on my desktop now. I need to get around to listening to them, but they're not live. I don't know if she does any other live ones, but I'm glad to find this one, baby. This is a keeper right here. Um, can't be happy enough about it. It's a promotional copy as well, which is cool. And, man, it's just... When you hear the people clapping, and the people just remarking and saying the amens when she's talking to them, in between the songs, you just you just gotta love it. This is some great stuff here. This is what I'm most happy about ha having now. Yeah, so those are my records I want to show you guys. Um, so thanks for watching. Other than that, I want to thank everyone for all the thoughts and prayers over the last few months. And you know, I got my head all shaved, and I'm all ready. And tomorrow, I'm going in to my first day. So tomorrow will be my first day. Um, I'm gonna be doing a full-time 40-hour-plus work week. Normal, um, at the hotel. Sunday, two days ago, was my last day at Starbucks. Um, so I have today off to sort of gather myself before I start the new job. Just one day in between, which is fine. Um, but this week particularly, because supposedly Monday is a very busy day at the hotel, so they said rather than getting you started with your training on the very first day, I'm starting on a Tuesday, so I'm going to have 32 hours this week doing Thursday through Friday, Tuesday through Friday. Their week schedule is actually work Saturday, all the Saturday through Fridays, um, which is different for me. I've seen Sunday through Mondays, but I've never seen Saturday through Fridays, so that's how that's going to be working out. Um, I'm going to be doing the 3 to 11.30 p.m. shifts from Tuesday through Friday. So maybe I'll do some posting and keep you guys updated when I have my next day off just on how that's going. But man, on Friday I went in, I met with someone new from the HR because the other girl, woman wasn't there and she was really, really sweet. Um, I met, you know, the, my boss right above me is super excited and it was cool because I was in the hotel and I was meeting people in the back, in the office behind the, the front desk where all the stuff's happened and um, everyone was just so nice and excited and, you know, it's just sort of like, Everyone, they knew about me. They were like, oh, you're Tim. Oh, we've heard good things, you know. It's just like, so they're actually amped up about me. And I'm super excited about that. Um, it's, man, I'm just so I'm just so blessed. I'm so grateful. Um, the Lord has been doing so much great stuff for me. And, man, you guys have all been so supportive. So I just want to thank you. I'll go more into some cool stuff as time comes. But, uh, you know, I check out different floors of the hotel and everything. But, you know. One thing that's cool is I have my own parking spot that I'm paying for per month, which is fine. But I got my own parking spot in Charlotte, and it's right near the hotel, so I can get there in five minutes walking into work. And it's cool because it's just nice to know I have a Charlotte park spot right in the city anytime I want, and now I'm going to feel a lot more connected with the right in the uptown area. So that's going to be fun. Our restaurants to go to and things to do like that. So Anyway, I love guys. Hope you guys had a good time watching the video. appreciate it, and I will talk to you guys soon.